Hi, this is Brent with Studio One Expert, and in this third chapter of this free four part series with Waves, I'm going to be showing you how we can use the Abbey Road Chambers to enhance the ambience that we created using the J37 in part two. So if you want to go back and check out part two, I'd recommend that you do, and then this video will make a little bit more context. So something that a lot of us are often conflicted with is whether we should use ambience, reverb, etc., delay. Do we use time-based effects on base material? And the reason is it can create some horrible masking issues, especially when we're using reverbs in low end. Now, this track in particular doesn't have any low end information as compared to the sub track and the Model 3 track. So I'm happy to use some ambience on here and I already have made some slapback moves using the J37. Now I'm going to continue with that and enhance it using the Abbey Road Chambers and I want you to see why. So let's have a listen to what the Abbey Road Chambers is doing and then I'll bypass it afterwards. <laughs> So it really is making a big difference to the sound of this bass. And as you can hear, there isn't really much low mids, even low end. So it's not causing any issues when it comes to that sort of masking in the EQ problem that we get with uh, bass. So let's have a look at why I've chosen the uh, stone over the mirror and the chamber. So if we go between the three, I'll tell you why. <laughs> So for me, the reason I went for the stone is the chamber sounds like it has a little bit of a feedback issue. And I know that's because we have the speaker here facing against the wall, but I just couldn't get it to sound quite right. And then with the mirror, I liked the sound, but I felt like the tail was a little bit too long. So I went for the stone because it had a very similar sound to the mirror, but it just deadened the sound a little bit. So it wasn't swarming and, and, and sort of just drowning in, in reverb. So I went for the stone, I backed off the reverb, and then I've backed off the dry wet blend a half. Um, I've done a bass cut here with the filters that go into the chamber. So what comes out of this speaker and then the microphones capture, I'm rolling off all the way up to about 600 hertz. And then I've also put some of this steed in as well, driving it just like we did with the J37. And I'm cutting bass up to 100 hertz on that. And I'm leaving the top end filler because we want more of the information from high mids and above. Um, another thing to point out is if you have a tape machine, on a channel strip or on an aux channel for that reason before reverb it dramatically changes the characteristics of the incoming source material and what goes out so what's really nice here is i'm using the j37 as my first insert and then i have a couple of other plugins and then lastly we'll have the abbey road chambers now the abbey road chambers has been fed a already distorted signal using the J37 because I've saturated it, I've gave it some slap back and that really does change it as well. So the two plugins together, they create a really, really like nice characteristic and analog sound. So let's have a listen to the Modo bass now in context with a whole track and then I'll turn off the Abbey Road chamber so you can hear the difference. <laughs> So it does make a big difference there to the actual sound that the Modo bass is bringing in the room. It also makes it last just that bit longer. And remember the Modo bass, the P bass, is the one that we want to be most present in the mix. Not the sub, not the Model D. We want the P bass to be there, the most present element of the bass mix. So I hope that you found this useful and I hope that you end up using some ambience on your bass tracks if it fits the mix. So I'll see you in part four when we look at the final element of this mix.